I said, well, you ain't going to get as much as he did, but that's still pretty good. And then uh, they said, really, how old are you? I said, well, you can't be over 40. And uh, I said, I'm 51, fixed to be 52. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, but, you know, the Lord has taken care of That's me. That's right, yes. Uh, especially coming from the background that I came from, and he's blessed me. Um, and uh, I think it's just because I walk around with a beautiful wife that this makes me feel so young. And, <laughs> he's trying to score points, you know, isn't he? Just, <laughs> that is, uh, you take them out to all to eat, right? Do I? You did take them all out. That's no, right. Chick-fil-A <laughs> come in, so it was you know, <laughs> top Chick-fil-A. So, uh, <laughs> There was no, yeah. you no need to care about any work on Chick Fil A's top of the line. You know, if you're a Chick Fil A Chick Fil A person. Yeah. I want you to turn tonight to Proverbs chapter 22. So we can see we end it tonight. We're going to pray for you before you get out of here. That's we prayed right. for you a while ago, but we're going to pray for you That's right. tonight. Amen. We are praying. Yes. This is the last one she has to have. That's right. Yep. The Lord That's is going right. to take care of it. Amen. How many agree Amen. with me? Yes. That? Amen. Amen. I believe that. I really believe really right. Amen. Now, you're going to think I'm, I'm preaching to children tonight, but uh, you know, because this scripture gets used a lot when it talks about family and it talks about training of children, but I want to put a little twist on it tonight, if that's all right. And it's found in Proverbs chapter 22, down <laughs> verse 6. It's very familiar scripture. It says, Train up a child in the way that you'll go, he should go. And when he is old, but he will not depart from it. Uh, I want to preach a subject tonight. The making of a champion. Yes. The making of a champion. Would you help me pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your love, your compassion. Thank you for your sweet anointing that we feel in this house. Lord, we love it when you show up. And Lord, and move and minister in our midst. Lord, we don't want to do anything without you. We, want, we don't want this to be a social gathering on men's tonight. Lord, we want this to be a time where we've met with you, studied your word, and you have changed us, challenged us. And Lord, and we just thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Uh, years ago, I don't know if you, how many of you watched the Olympics. Well, a few of us. Uh, how many of you like to watch the bobsled? For some reason, I just love to watch the bobsled. You know, you're watching these four, not just the single guys, you know, or the, or the, or the uh, two guys. I like to watch the four guys. And uh, that's always my challenge. But then you have, the, you have the ones where the single guy goes, and then you have the one where the doubles go. And years ago, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a guy who got in. I can't remember his name. I didn't write it down. I just just come to my memory. And uh, he he had a terrible, terrible accident. He got killed uh, during the Olympics. He had a terrible bobsledding accident where he rolled, turned upside down, got pinned up under it, and, and rode for hundreds of yards uh, down that icy terrain. And and, and I'm, 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 I'll tell you this: that ice. If you've ever uh, been on ice before, ice is like concrete. You know, it, it, it doesn't give. But let me get back to what I'm saying. He, he had trained so hard to make it to the Olympics. He had trained so hard to get the qualifying time down, and he had already set two good times that, uh, that were going to lead him to the next round. And, but he, then he has this terrible accident. And, but the, the point I want to make is this. There was four things that come to mind when I got to thinking about not just him making it to the Olympics, but I got to thinking about what, what drives an Olympian? What, what drives a, a baseball player, per se? Or what drives a, a, uh, a football player? You know, they have to have some things that are pushing them forward to make them a champion. People that approach things that, uh, sports-wise that are really not into them, they don't have the drive of a champion. Everybody understand what I'm saying? A, a, a champion has a drive inside of him. He has, a, he has four things that come to mind when I think about training of a champion. First of all, he's got to have training. 
And he's got to have training. You, you, you just don't automatically, some people are naturals, but they still have to have some tweaking and, and some turning to make them the person that they need to be. So they, first of all, they have to have training. They have to have a goal. What, it was, what is their goal? A football player, a professional football player, is to make it to the Super Bowl. He has, he has done what he wants to make it to the Super Bowl. That's the game. Well, okay. well, I don't know if there's any Atlanta Braves fans in the house who wave at me tonight. And uh, if, if you're not, I feel sorry for you. But we're, we're you know, we're two games up in this thing. And and, and, and last night, I was the preacher in the hospital because I thought we was going to blow it. But uh, but we, we made it. But the, their goal is, is the Atlanta Braves have been to the World Series in years. I believe it was 1996 or 98, the last time they were actually in the World Series game. And that was back when, we, you know, we had Smoltz. I'm trying to get off, off of baseball here, but we had Smoltz and Maddox. You know, and, and I call I call Owen, I call him Maddox all the time, you know. And, 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 and so what I want what I want to say to you tonight is that there's a driving force. Now, us as Christians, there has to be a driving force. There has to be a training for us to, as Christians. Right. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, let's do away with Sunday school and let's do away with a lot of different things, but you have to have that training. I, I, I like Sunday school because Sunday school is that time where you can you can gather together or a small group and you gather right. together and you learn training. And then there has to be a goal. Every Christian in here, what is your goal? What is your right. motivation? What pushes you? For a sports fan is to be a champion. I, I'll tell you what mine is, is I want to hear the Lord say, well done, but I also want to make it to a place called heaven. Right. Amen. Amen. I want to see the Lord team. So i got a goal. Right. Now, number three, there has to be a determination to reach the goal. <laughs> if you're not determined as a champion to reach that goal, then, then that determination, you won't go very far if you don't have right. the determination to press forward. And then there has to be a prize. The prize for us is when we, Brother Newton, one day stand before Jesus and, 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 and thank Him for His amazing grace, enter into a place called heaven where we see all of our loved ones in our mansion. So I want to talk about these, these four things tonight and then we'll pray and we'll go home. First of all, there has to be training. Okay? Yes. There has to be learning. Nobody just enters in as a, a Christian. It, it, it has a... a you have to learn. You have to either learn from the, uh, like I have, from the school of the hard knocks, yep. mm -hmm. uh, trial and error, mistakes. And then I learned to start listening to people. Anybody with me? After I made enough mistakes, I started to listen. Hey, man, you know, there's some people in here that's got gray hair. That, no, no offense, Brother Newton, but we, we got gray hair in the house that, hey, they walk this wall. They yeah. talk. This, well, they, they have been through some valleys and they've been through some storms and, and they know what they're talking about. So I begin to listen and begin to take that as training. They, it has been said that the Japanese, when the Japanese will actually take their children, when they first take their first step, they already have a destiny plan for them as an athlete or, or some particular thing. They begin to train them immediately. That is why I did. when you see them, most of the time, if you watch a, a, a gymnast that come from Japan or China, etc., you, you will notice that, that it seems like all their moves are just so natural to them when, they, when they're out on the mat and when they're doing that. And if you watch their baseball players. It's so precise. There's so many different things. So they, when they start training them, I, I can bring a little closer to home. How many of you have ever heard of Burns High School? in the upstate. Burns High School has probably turned out so many, I don't, they were not as good this year, but they actually travel a lot as a high school team and travel in different places, play in Florida, California, a lot of different places. I don't know if they're still doing that now. But years ago, Burns High School, they had a program to where they were running the teaching kids the same offense. Now, don't you hear this? They were teaching the kids in midget league football the same style of offense that they would run when they got to the high school. So by the time they got to the high school, high school level playing football, it was natural for them. You know, they had to do some tweaking and some adding to to get there. But by the time they got to the high school level, they already knew what most of the plays were designed to do. So it came 
natural to them. And championship after championship after championship, college recruits going to Clemson, going to Carolina, going to Florida, all these different ones. Uh, because why? Because they were set on training their raise your children in church. Uh, but may I tell you that just because they're not sitting here now doesn't mean that they their training has passed away from them. You know, it's like some people say that once you learn how to ride a bicycle, it doesn't matter how many years it is, you can sit down on a bicycle, you can learn how to, you can get right on it and start riding again. But may I tell you, you know, it might not be as good as you used to be on it, but because we all are getting older. But the fact remains that when you train somebody, and we need to train our children, we need to go and sharpen them and train them when they're young and, and bring them. And I always tell people, don't bring your children to church and drop them off. Bring your children and, and let them know that, that not only are you wanting them to be trained, but you're tra still in training yourself. So they will see later on in life that mom and dad came to church even though they were in their 40s and in their 50s and in their 60s, and, and they, yet they still came to church. What that tells me is that mom and dad was still in training, and it tells their kids that they will not depart from it because they have, I feel the Lord in here, they have been trained also, and if the parents are still getting trained. And may I tell you, you, you never quit learning about the Lord. If you ever feel like you're getting figured out, write a book. It'll be a bestseller. Because I want to tell you, you'll never get everything figured out about God. But we have a training that we always are continuously in. You see, God trains us through experiences. You see, I have experiences now as a 50-year-old that I didn't have when I was 20 years old. Somebody help me tonight. I, I, I didn't face those same experiences. I wasn't married then. I, right. I, I can't believe my wife actually posted a picture of me with that Yankee hair. I don't know if no offense to any Yankee, but my hair was all long and shabby dropped over my face. And I, I, I you know, skin and bones, you know. And, 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 and then, she, then she, you know, she, I, just, I couldn't believe she died now. But I, I look a lot better than I did then. I'll just say that. But, but it, I still don't look good, but I'm, you know, I don't know what I take you But what I'm saying is this, is the things that I face now in life, I have to have training for them now, Brother right. Paul. I have to have them training for them now because I'm facing things now all of us are. Amen. We've never seen a COVID disease. Right. We've never seen anything like this before. So we're in training. What is the Lord doing? This? Because if we ever have another COVID Okay, if we ever have another disease to come along, then we can look back at this and we say, well, the Lord brought us through that, then the Lord can bring us through this next one that we're going to face. And, and so I've been trained through an experience with God. You think about it. Now, I'm not going to spend too much more time here. But Job was trained through his experiences. Daniel was trained through his experience with the lions. Moses was trained with his experience when he faced Pharaoh. Paul was uh, trained and saw the grace of God applied to his life. He was a murderer and a persecutor. But all of them, through their training, became champions of the faith. Hallelujah. Why? Because they went through the training. They had a goal in the experience. Number two, they must be a goal. People that don't set goals are not doing anything. I'm not trying to be mean. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how, how, how aged you are, you should always set a goal. Some people set a goal that they can get their house clean for the day. Hey, you're setting a goal. You're, you're pushing yourself. You're always got to be pushing. There has to be a motivational goal that you set. You know, if, if we don't, if, if we have not set goals in our life, I, I think back again to the Olympics. I, they, they make a goal. What is their goal? I'm going to win the gold medal. I'm not just going to participate. That's one thing it used to, and I love, you know, kids, please know why I take me wrong. But that used to drive me crazy when they would give everybody a participating trophy. <laughs> it used to drive me don't give a kid, you know, he's, he's thinking, well, it don't matter if we're champions or not, we're going to get a trophy. Push them, maybe give them a people, but don't make everybody equal because if you make everybody equal, please nobody will take the wrong. It's because there's no motivation to do better.
matter if everybody gets the same thing, everybody with me tonight. Because if, if there's a goal that I'm setting, I'm setting that goal. Why? I don't want the bronze and I don't want the silver. I want the gold. And as Christians, I, I don't want to just mosey through this Christian walk. I want to be the best Christian I can be. I want to be a Christian that when I enter into heaven, he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Not, oh, you just made it by the hair of your head. You know, you just barely made it. I want to hear say, well done, and hear the excitement in the Lord's voice that, that I did what he wanted me to do. And I'm winning the prize, right. the goal. I'm finishing my goal that I set. I, I think about is, is not only to set the, 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 the goal, but they also set a record time, or, or not just to finish, but to stand out. They, 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 they don't want to just mosey through it, because if we're just going to mosey through life, that's all we're going to get out of life. Right. I want to be the best Christian I can be. Amen. I want to be the best pastor I can be. Amen. I want to be the best husband I can be. Wives, etc. Be, be that to your husband. I want to be the best that I can be. Because if we don't set goals, we won't push ourselves to do better every day. Somebody say amen. amen. There must be number three, determination. If you're not determined, as I watch this, this, this guy as he had this terrible accident, as it unfolded, and they kept playing it over and, and, and over again because you couldn't really see him, so it was not showing any graphic details, just showing the wreck. I thought about how he was pushing himself with determination to get a better time. There was a, there was a determinant how many times he practiced. His determination kept pushing him to do his best, kept telling him to drive it better, kept telling him to have a harder push on, kept telling him to run faster, kept telling him. And, and see, that's what we need to do with the Lord. Yes. Listen to the Spirit that tells us to read our Bible more. Yes. Listen to the Spirit that says pray more. Listen to the Spirit that says you need to be in church today. Right. Listen to the Spirit. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Because the Holy Spirit is the quickening power of God that moves upon us and convicts us and changes us and, and pushes us to do better. And if we don't listen to the Spirit, then we, we, we won't, won't be a champion of the right. faith. Right. We won't be a champion Christian. We'll just mosey through and just finish the, oh, I'm just glad I just finished the course. I, I don't want Maybe you've got that out too. Now, I'm not knocking you, but I don't want to just finish. I, I want to finish well. It's not how I started out, but it's how I finish. And I've got determination that I want to, I, I want to be the best that I can be. But without determination, you're not going to push yourself. Listen to what Paul said in Philippians 3. It's a very familiar scripture. The 3 and 13. He said, Brethren, I cannot, I, I count myself not to apprehend, but with this one thing. He said, But this one thing that I do, getting those things which are behind and reaching for under those things which are before. He is pressing forward, looking. Now, listen to me tonight. He is putting every failure, mm -hmm. he's putting every hurt, Amen. he's putting everything that he has done in the past, and he is saying, I will not let that. Affect me, and I'm determined to do nothing but finish this race. He said another place. He said, I, I determined only to know this one thing, and that's Christ and Him crucified and risen again. I want to tell you that when we set our minds and with determination, there is not, I heard somebody say it the other day, and I, and I said, Wow, somebody finally said it other than me. There is nothing more powerful than a made up mind. That's right. Amen. I was talking the other day to the person that told me that. I told him, I said, well, you know, that's how I quit drugs and alcohol. I got sick and tired of it. And I made up my mind. I'm not going to do it no more. Amen. I made up my mind. And, and when some of this listen to me in here in this place now, when you make up your mind to do something and God be for you and who can be against you, let me tell you something. There is nothing impossible with God. He just sometimes waiting on us, uh, Brother Charles, to make up our mind and say, oh, Lord, look, Lord, I want to be the best that I can be. And 
this is a hindrance to me, and this is a problem to me, and this has hurt me, and this has caused me to hold, hold on to this, but I'm letting it all go. I'm putting it in the past, and I am pressing forward because I want to be the best that I can be for you. Somebody give me praise. Yes. Hallelujah. See, Paul saw in himself a, as, as a race runner. You see, he exerted all of his strength in pressing on with intense concentration. If you watch an athlete, you, some people say it with them, them quarterbacks in the NFL, I know some of you probably said this, how can they not see that 350-pound, six-foot-eight guy running at him just going, just hammers him in the ground? I'll tell you why. His goal in his preparation has him focused on one thing, and that is to get the ball down the field to that receiver so that that receiver can score the touchdown. That's why he never sees that guy coming. It's because he is focused. If you look at the camera angles, his eyes are totally focused. His eyes are focused on one thing. And as I said, receiver running that pattern, getting that ball in the right place at the right time. Because they can win a championship. If it's a Super Bowl game, they can win a championship if they connect that pass down the field. What I want to say to you as Christians tonight, we've got to keep our focus where our focus needs to be and let the Lord take care. I love it when these little bitty, oh, I'm hung up on football tonight, but I love it when these little bitty running backs, all of a sudden this 300 pound guy is coming running at that quarterback and all of a sudden here comes your little old running back, the little stout guy, and he just plows right into that that guy and knocks him out of the way or takes his legs out from under and the quarterback is able to let me tell you I'm going to tell you something the Lord is not one of these short running backs but the times when you're focused on oh hallelujah that you're focused on what the Lord is calling you to do and what the Lord is wanting you to do and finish the race let me tell you when the enemy comes to your blind side I know somebody that's got your blind side hallelujah it's the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost and when the enemy wants to hit you hallelujah the Lord has got your side and he throws that block when the enemy was going to try to take you out. Right. It's been a many a time in my life that I'm pressing forward to get to accomplish what the Lord wants me to accomplish. And all of a sudden I can see enemies coming from every direction. The rush and the press is on. But I'm going to tell you all of a sudden out of nowhere the Lord just unleashes his power and all those enemies that were meant to take me out the Lord just put them all on the ground and I got finished with, with what the Lord wanted me to do. I'll come to tell but the Lord is for you, not against you. Right. He will yes. keep you in safe. He will keep you in good health. But you have got to keep the determination and the press for right. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. There must be, last of all, a prize. Heaven is but Can you agree with me? Heaven is much more than heaven. Mm -hmm. if, I, if, if that's a statement. To me, heaven ain't all about mansion. Streets gold, crystal sea, tree of life. Heaven is more than that to me. Heaven is my prize. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting for something down here. That's right. Somebody help me tonight. I'm Amen. fighting for something down here. That's right. The Lord has already won the battle, but I, I've got to listen. I've got to stay true. I've got to stay faithful. You see, because i got to go out on the field of life every day of my life. Amen. And i got to do my best for the team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel I appreciate it. i got to do the best for the team. Because you see, the ones that's on the sideline looking to me out on the field are the young people that are looking to us how we're going to finish the course. Right. How are we going to finish the battle? And they're watching us. And so my prize is not only heaven, but my prize is to set the example for the generation that is being trained coming up behind me. How many of you know that you don't have to say something sometimes and people are always watching you and they can be influenced by your actions and they can be trained by your actions? 
Let me tell you something. There's mannerisms. I went to a, a heart school Monday to do a funeral. Uh, a great part, the same part of the great side that the, the other part of the family done the singing and everything at the church. And so but at the grave side, uh, we, before we got there, we were in the parking lot, and this young boy, he walked up to us, and Tessa used to teach him in, 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 in Sunday school. He used to be down here, and now he's like this. <laughs> just blossom out of nowhere. I don't know what they feed our youngins these days, but I'm telling you, they just all just getting tall. Somebody say amen. amen. Our young ladies, too, they're getting tall. But he walked over, and and I had always told him when he was young, I said, you're going to be just like your daddy. Because he would talk like his daddy. His mannerisms was like his daddy. And he showed up yesterday, and he didn't realize it, but I coached baseball with his dad, and he was doing everything that his dad used to do when we would be out on the field. He started talking baseball, and Brother Powell, he was doing his hand reactions, and he was doing his facial expressions and everything. And I said, hold on a minute. I said, you remember what I told you? I said, you're going to be just like your dad. I said, guess what? You're just like your dad. And he just smiled real big, and I looked at him, and I said, that's a good thing, son. Because his dad is a Christian. He works in the church. He teaches Sunday school. He's a great man. He's a singer. He's a great man of God. And the man that I married was his daddy. And he was just like his dad. But I tell you that your children are watching you. Your grandchildren are watching you. And whether you preach the Bible to them. Or whether you do anything else. They're being trained by your actions. They're being trained about how you seek for the prize. That's why I tell people. Even sometimes when you don't feel like coming to church. Come on and come to church anyway if it's any way possible because you're coming to church you never know that kids across the street might be watching I'm saying well are they going to church today I know they've been going through some things and their parents on the street are saying I know they're going through some things let's see what they're going to do let's see how they're going to react now that they're going through these days let's see how they're going to do and you're training people whether you realize it how we handle things in the church and we're walking around and I'm not being mean here and griping about everything under the sun and then you know what our next generation is going to do they're, they're going to gripe about everything too that's right. yes amen it's true it's true Somebody elbow your neighbor said that's pretty good preaching. That's pretty good, pretty pretty good preaching. <laughs> they're gonna they're they're gonna complain just like we complain. Amen. Amen. You are training them. That's right. Amen. And see, it's just like with that, and I'm fixing the clothes. It's just like that young quarterback that's on there waiting for his opportunity. And that Tom Brady's out on the field. I don't know, you, you've got to love Tom Brady, best, one of the best quarterbacks. I know some of you might be Bradshaw fans and, and Bar Star fans. You know, y'all didn't think I knew of all them old quarterbacks like that. And some of you might have been some of them fans. But I'll tell you, Tom Brady's the best that's ever played a game. I got one. <laughs> But that quarterback is standing on the sideline. You see, let me let me let me go for this. Brett Farr. Anybody Brett Farr fans out? All y'all hate this Tom Brady. I'm gonna pray for y'all. Any Brett Farr fan? Anybody remember Brett Farr? Am I really old in here? You played for the Green Bay? You, you, you Brett Farr. Aaron Rodgers made the statement. That he got a lot of his training from watching Brett Favre play. So he watched how he handled situations on the field. He watched how he reacted in certain plays. He watched how he kept his arm, uh, arm ready to throw down the field. He watched how he escaped the pocket. And I will tell you, Aaron Rodgers is one of the best. Uh, uh, he's getting a little older now. And, and I hope he never watches this. But he's getting a whole lot older now. And he can't move around as good. But he used to be one of the biggest uh, uh, escape artists that was. You look like he's going down on the ground. And he would pop up and throw it down the field 50 yards and score touchdown. But he said he learned all that by watching Brent Favre. So what I will close with this. How we're training our children is more than what we're saying to them. If we don't have a determination 
If we don't set goals for our church, somebody help me tonight. Never look at Georgetown Church of God as just being stagnant. That's right. I, I love you to death, but when we get stagnant, I'll pack my bags. That's true. Yes. I might get in trouble there, but what I'm saying is the moment that we think and don't have a goal to be better, That's right. I mean, reach more people, right. bring more people in. That's when you get stagnant, and that's when you don't feel the presence of the Lord. That's when you don't have church services like we've been having. That's when you don't have no desire to come to church. I'm preaching better than y'all shout. That's all when that happens is because you are losing your determination, and you've lost your goal, and you've lost your eye on the prize. You see, my other prize that I want is not just to make it to heaven, but my prize is, is I want to carry as many people as I can with when I go up, I can't grab them by the hand, but I sure can preach to them. I sure can train them. I sure can tell them how to live to make sure that one day when that trumpet sounds, hallelujah, that they're ready to go. They're ready to go up. They might grumble and gripe and complain about the preaching of the gospel. They might grumble and gripe and complain about living holiness and living a righteous life. But I want to tell you that when they go home at night, I can prove it. I can prove it. I won't even mention her name, but this young lady sitting right here, Rinsley. Oh, I can't say her name. Did <laughs> I wrote her the other night and I told her, I said, You bless my heart. And she said, Why? I said, You bless my heart because you take a notepad every time. She don't miss a time. Every time I preach, oh hallelujah, she opens that pad up and gets her pen out and she's trying to, and I preach pretty fast sometimes, and she's writing and she's putting it all down in there. And I said, I, I said, I love it when you write. I said, and, and you're writing the sermon down. I said, because I know you're listening. She said, I don't just listen. She said, I take it home. And she said, and when I'm sitting around the house, I go back over it and I look up everything that you said on there. And she said, then I apply it to my life again. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And I said, I told Tess, I said, if I don't preach to nobody else, I'm preaching the Lord that's getting what I'm trying to say to him. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And for a young person to do that, my friends. As somebody that's got a goal on her mind. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. See, listen. Train them. Mm -hmm. Train them not only with words, but train them with action. That's right. Realize that sometimes you're training people in this building mm -hmm. by how you do. That's right. Set a goal. You know, I'm going to have this day where we're going to pack, we used, they used to do it years ago, pack a pew. You know why I want to do that? Because I want you to set a goal. I want you to set a goal. I want you to set a goal. What would it be like if we had pack a pew and this whole building, you couldn't even fit nobody in here? Amen. Charles, you already got your pew packed over there in the corner. <laughs> Charles said, I already set my goal and finished it today. <laughs> If we don't set goals, we'll dry it up as a church and as Christians. And I don't want to dry it up. I want to be a champion. Champion of the faith. Be a champion of faith, I've got to have a prize. I've got to have the determination to do something. Stand your feet all over this house. I'm going to challenge you. Go home and set goals for your family. Not goals of success in sports, and that's all has its place and all that. Set Christian goals. Say, we're going for a month's time, 
we're going to take a certain time every evening and we're going to throw the cell phones in a basket. Yeah, they're going to gripe. They're going to be upset. Take the cell phones and throw the cell phones in a basket. And you might find out, gentlemen and ladies, you might find out with gentlemen, they might gripe more than the teenager. But set a goal and say, we're going to sit down and we're going to read our Bible. I would start probably maybe 15 minutes. Read 15 minutes. Because most of the time we learned the other day at the way in over here in the parking lot, you got you pushing it when you got 15 minutes with teenagers. Because they're doing a weigh in on something that they love and they're, they're showing fish up there. And in about 15 minutes, I'm standing beside Brother Powell and these kids start <laughs> dragging their feet around. They're thinking they lost them. They gone. Mm -hmm. And the guy was trying to speak up there, but it was, it was, it was over. Uh, the kids just don't start wandering around. They will not pay attention anymore. So try 15 minutes. If you don't want to do that, set another goal. Yes. Say we're going to start at night. We're going to, we're going to, everybody put your cell phone aside. We're going to join hands, sit on the floor or sit around the bed, kneel down on the side of the bed and join hands and pray. And so you might start off praying for five minutes. So sometimes for some people, five minutes is all you need to pray. Because I know some people that pray an hour, and I know some people that pray five minutes, and one will say more than five minutes than they do say an hour. That's right. Amen. Somebody help me tonight. That's right. Amen. But what I'm challenging you to do is set goals and be determined. And you know what your prize will be? Is when that child one day, you walk in there and where they've been griping, and you've done got to have a busy day. Hey, brother and sister Powell, they've had a busy day. I'm just going to use y'all. And, and, and you bring them, oh, and in there, you bring them in, you get them in there, and you do it a few times, and, you know, he's in there, and he, he goes along, but he really doesn't want to go along. I think he's such a good boy, he would go along. But just say, for instance, if he was the rebellious kind, and he, he didn't really want to do it. You know what your prize would be? Would be the time when you're tired, you come in from work, and you done forgot about doing it, and he walks up and says, Mom and Dad, it's time for prayer. Mm -hmm. Mom and Dad, it's time for the Bible. Yes. That's right. That would be your prize. Yes. That would be your prize. Because did you know you're accomplishing your goal Amen. with right. determination? Let me pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. I pray with these wonderful people. These are my friends, these are my brothers, these are my sisters. Lord in Christ, what an honor it is to pastor them. What an honor it is to be able to preach to them. What an honor it is to be used by you to do so. I pray, Lord, that we would be the examples. Lord, let it start with the Wednesday night crowd. Let it start with these who are faithful. And Lord, let us train up those that are around us so it's a contagious fire and it just begins to spread and begins to burn and we become the light in the community like we're supposed to, the light in the family like we're supposed to. And Lord, we just give you praise and glory. Make your face shine down upon them. Keep them in good health. Meet every, according, every need according to your riches and glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen. Amen. Sister Wendy, I'm not going to make you rise. So I want a few people to come with me tonight. Come on back here. Let's pray for everyone.